So here's a quick question to everybody in the space. How many of you in here tonight have ever had this thought, right? What is it that I can do to make the world a better place? Anybody? Anybody ever? <laughs> come on, see, come on, show my hands. <laughs> really, all right? And look, then you're in the target market. Because here's the thing, like we live in a society full of constructs that doesn't necessarily always allow us to act on that impulse. But the thing is, you'd be surprised, the vast majority of us have that. And so what we're building this space for, specifically, is to have a space where people can go to engage with each other in meaningful ways. Meaningful ways toward doing projects, realizing ideas, goals, to make your community a better place, to make your life a better life, to make your world a better world. How can we collaborate together to do those things? What are they? How do we open up that discussion? You, know, you see how the world, the state of the world's in now? You had Occupy, you had the Arab Uprising, you had everybody's like now saying, hey, this is all wrong, and the, and the big financial crisis, this is all messed up. We gotta start over, we gotta do something. The systems are broken. And we need to start to develop and create a new reality. And this is a place that's gonna be dedicated to that idea. <coughs> Why a treehouse? Well, a treehouse, everybody's pretty familiar with. It's like what all the kids in the neighborhood, they all come together and they bring their resources and drag pieces of wood and old tires and they ask their dad if they can have something out of the garage and they, and they make a space. A space where they can create, where they can play, where they can have uh, intimate engagements, encounters, and public encounters. And that's what we want to have here. We're not only building this space as a place that people can walk in and Wow, oh, wow, you know, you walk in. This is a very this is a very mild illustration of that because we had to develop this on the computer and, and what this basically shows, it shows the layout of the space relatively well. But all the details will be more determined by the artists. And you can't computer animate that. But this model took a, a lot of work and a lot of intense effort, and it was made by Andrew James, who's sitting right over there in the corner. Andrew? No. <laughs> Yeah, we've been going back and forth on this. You'll see some different iterations of it throughout the time. So I think what we do right now is we'll just show a quick out. Uh, 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 we have like, well, how long is this? The one minute, 20. One minute, 20 seconds. We have one minute, 20 second trailer. Knock me your lobes. Our goal is to design and build a treehouse. We're building it here, in the middle of a developing multicultural neighborhood inside a dramatic raw space with high ceilings and a giant column in the middle of it. What else could you do with a space like this? Das Baumhaus will be a functional work of art, open to the public, that can be used as a project and event space. A sp it's a project where people come together and they do stuff that they, they like and what they choose because they want to, you know, because they want to build. There are possibilities in this life where I can fuse everything together and I think uh, the Balmos does that to everybody who's participating. You know, everyone has different inputs from all their past experiences, so it's it's just all that much more amazing. Man muss halt umgucken, was man für Materialien findet ne? und wieder benutzen halt. So sind übrigens die ganzen Kunstgeschichten entstanden. <lacht> I feel that art has exhausted itself in terms of being from above the neck. Why else? I mean, you know, I mean to save the world, of course. And, and it's just, just fun. It's just energetic and explodes and it's daring. Okay, that's just our that's our trailer for our full project explanation film. As you can, you know, you can, we have a we have links to that on our on our crowdfunding site. Um, and that's the phase that we're in right now. We're, we, this project is going to cost us, to all total, 200,000 euro to make. And that's super cheap for a space of 140 quadrat meter with an upstairs and a downstairs and everything custom in it. Because we have a lot of various different artists and collaborators putting their time and effort into it. One of the artists here as well, Janae. You know, you know, Janae's a, a painter and a sculptor, general all-around artist. I see somebody else back here, right? Hi. 
She's, she's going to be the wife. Would you have your name again? Uh, Daryl. Daryl. Daryl's brand new on the team. She said this is probably the first time we're meeting tonight. She's going to be participating in an online auction that's coming up. So, yeah, the phase that we're in right now is this crowdfunding phase where we're using a platform called Start Next to, to, to ask people to contribute to the project. Is it worth you know, something to them to help make this a reality? We're also asking people to, you know, whether they're contributing time or materials or ideas or effort or money, whatever it takes to build a space and a place that we can work and use together. And the idea is not only do we want to build this here as an iconic space in Berlin, but we'd like to have people take this idea and do it everywhere else. We can have 20 of these in Berlin easily. Places working to make the city a better place, right? So that's kind of our strategy and our, and our plan. Trying to get anything else to add to that? Isaac? I came out here to Scotty asked me to. Scotty has endlessly involved me in one wonderfully crazy and possible project, something which have actually worked out. He's a very convincing person. I always say, I can't possibly let this happen. And the next thing you know, I get on an airplane up here for three weeks to do this. I think a lot of it. And tonight we were talking about it. It occurred to me that we live in a world of kind of an international corporate structure. And the whole world is corporations around the world. And as cultures, and as cultural people, we don't have an international perfect awareness. And, and essentially, it's other than the country, but nevertheless, my mind is urban. I, I think that this is a, 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 a seedling for an international urban kind of consciousness that involves living amongst many different kinds of people, exchanging many different kinds of cultural ideas, and also in some way keeping nature itself alive inside of the urban context. You know, whether it's things, handmade places like this, whether it becomes things like green roofs, uh, encouraging and forcing the, the urban environment to be more green, to have more both in terms of processes of living, but also in the liberal sense of creating vegetation, bringing vegetation back into cities and so on. It's essentially making an oxygen neutral place. You know, one thing to have a small carbon footprint, it would be great to have a small oxygen consumption footprint. And sometimes when I'm in some cities, I feel like I'm, there's no air. Certainly no spiritual air. This is where it's coming from. Mm -hmm. And it's very nice of him to call me the godfather or grandfather of psychedelic art, and there's some argument for that. I mean, I had the first gallery in the world that actually had that as a theme. And then I became a painter because I didn't see what I wanted to see yet. And I've gone through many iterations in my work, all having to do with the kinds of awarenesses that psychedelic experiences and a kind of openness to new awarenesses and the dissolution of boundaries in between people that have come to me in, in the way I view psychedelics, which are not, in my mind, drugs, they're kind of brain food, they're kind of a mind food. They're, they're, they dissolve, sort of kind of fix things and allow people to re-imprint ourselves and to rebirth ourselves in the context of our own lives. And that's essentially what I think is most important that we realize that we can do. We can grow up to be something and then learn about other ways of being and be able to introduce other ways of being into our lives and open ourselves so in the end we're like everyone in the world. And so that's, you know, the only way to, to fight, if you want to use that word, or develop a force, if you want to use that word, that balances out the corporate power is an international cultural awareness, an international unity of cultures and finding how all the cultures feed each other. Mm -hmm. And it's like a tree. Mm -hmm. We're housing it. I want to add something to this, pick up where you were right there, because the reason why I asked Isaac to come here is because if you've seen his work, there is it's everything is organic. There is not a straight line in any of this stuff. Yes, this is not. Yeah. Here, yeah, you can look, take a look at this, some of this paintings. Take a look at this while we're talking. It's really amazing stuff, right? But 
That's one the hole I saw here in Berlin. When I look around in Berlin, mostly I see buildings that are square and all the walls are parallel and sometimes there is a circle, half circle, and sometimes there is an ellipse. You know, this is a very German culture inside and the architecture here is very organized and it's very efficient, right? But I believe that it doesn't relate so well to the human condition. If you look at us, we are, look, there's not a straight line on my body either, you know? It's like who we are, and inside we're all goofy, and like this is how, that's what, that's, and look at nature. Nature is all curvilinear and organic, you know, but yet we are so used to and conditioned to surrounding ourselves in these little boxes, and that affects your psyche, that affects how you are. So, you know, I couldn't think of anybody who could see more deeply into the, 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 the roots of the organic nature of, of life than what you, you'll see in this book and what you'll see in this glass and what you'll see in this place. And literally, the very first things that will be made for this space that will be real will be the glass panels. You can pass these around so you can see what I'm talking about. You know, the glass panels up in the top of the treehouse here. Just pass those around. There you go. Okay, so here's a few more. All right. That's the first real thing that's going to be made for this. And that is literally going to be the aesthetic DNA for this project. Those will be made, those panels will be made with that glass, that crazy stuff. And we'll look at it, the artist will look at it, interpret, and then bring, continue to grow that out into the space. And that's why the aesthetic ultimately, on the end of the day, is not going to look like what the computer model looks like. The layout will be the same, but who knows what it'll look like. Our imagination is this. What happens if Gaudi got together with Frank Lloyd Wright and Avatar and Lord of the Rings? I have a question. Yeah. <laughs> um, you've, I mean, you've been talking about what I'm asking a little bit, but um, I think there, there are more things that, that you've been telling me and that maybe you all also um, haven't been telling me. Um, that is, um, what do you think are the fundamental things that a place like that needs in order to work socially and uh, in all those ways that you want it to work? What are the, the ingredients? Socially? In, well, all the aspects that you want to uh, grow there. Well, I think one of the main key things is like that this neighborhood is going through gentrification. And we all know what that process has been through. I've been gentrified out of Friedrichshain after being there for eight years. I've been gentrified out of New York City after being there for like 17 years. And that's what's happening all around Berlin. You're seeing it happening, all these renovations. And so our strategy is this. We want to build a space that's going, that can strengthen the constituency, the population, the people who are there. We want to create economic opportunities, like for instance, everything, a lot, of, a lot of the collaborators are from our neighborhood or you know, in the area, right? And so we're creating this basically showcase space, it's a fancy space, everything's custom made from the dishes to the glasses to the, the, the tables, the floor, the ceiling, everything, right? The lights, and it's all made by people from around the area, right? We're gonna, you know, the, one of the guys who was working on the project, Jesper Jensen, he's making uh, the, all the glassware. Now, he can't do that all by himself. So what he can do is he can train young Turkish kids from the neighborhood to come and help manufacture those things and teach them how to work with glass. You know? Or the people from the neighborhood uh, will ask people, there, what do you want to have happen in this treehouse? What do you need to do in the neighborhood? People say, we need more homework help for the kids. So then we will have an event or a night that will develop for homework help for the kids. It's a space for people to actually use to really do something real in the neighborhood. And we have a number of different um, ideas for events that we're going to do. Like, for instance, we want to do you know, um, a clothing exchange, you know, or a kids' art show, or um, we have language exchange nights. You know, that's all because we're trying, in our neighborhoods, we have a bunch of Turkish people, some Arabic people, a lot of Germans, and a ton of expat artists. I think that's, that's something I find special about this project because we actually want to bring different target groups together. No, we don't mix, you know, like build like, like student places or there's where the art scene meets. And um, I think one big 
um, tool of trying to do that is to go to space that's like so special that it doesn't look uh, like a normal student hangout, it doesn't look uh, like a normal gallery, but you go in there and it's a fantasy world. So everybody is like in a in a new environment, and so that's uh, so the aesthetics of the space one tool to actually bring these different groups together. Think about it. Like last time you walked into a space and you saw it in the space, made you go, "Wow, cool, man!" Right? And usually it's a space where you're not allowed to like walk up and touch all the beautiful art that's there, and that's what we're building this for. You know, we're taking like all this high art and design and beautiful master artworks and so forth. We're putting so using art as a tool. Like you can come in and get turned on by it, sit in it, touch it, use it. You know, use it to inspire <clears throat> and work inside it, develop ideas inside it, and get engaged with each other with good, uh, meaningful exchanges. So, no, there's no question that the forms and shapes and the contents of spaces affect the way people think in the most literal sense. A uh, long time ago, I uh, built a tetrahedral tent made out of two layers of silk an idea that the shape of the tetrahedron, which is a three-sided pyramid, pyramid and the base, that sitting in this kind of space with the light shining in from the outside would be induce, it would induce alpha states in the meditation more quickly than if you were simply sitting, you know, in a room, an empty room or something. And it, and we put people up with uh, like this, you know, things put here, the measure of rain waves and, and uh, moisture and blood pressure and so on. And absolutely, absolutely every time almost work that people could go into an alpha state of meditation of calm in like five, seven, eight minutes instead of 20 minutes, half an hour. It just, there's something about the kind of spaces. And we all know we enter certain kinds of spaces and we feel differently. And I think that Berlin is such an international city. I think of participating in the creation of the space. The people can come from Shanghai and Tokyo and Joburg and Colombia and anywhere else, you know, America, an alien place, and uh, go there and find themselves comfortable. But there's something about the, the, con the congregation of the different kinds of spaces, what's it in, what's in the spaces that makes people feel right. And, and that's the kind of thing I'd like to see us be more conscious of as people. And the creative work that we do as groups and individually. And also think about that kind of uh, mentality of easing the sense of uh, disassociation that you have from each other as they grow older, generally. They sort of get hacked into certain situations. And, and I see younger people, which I'm not one of, and I see younger people much more open and transnational and how to get that transcultural thing operating to, in order to start to resolve the differences that are emerging in the world in a, in a multi, you know, what they call a global environment. It's very, very different than, say, uh, 47 years ago when I first took psychedelics. The world is really more different than people could begin to understand. I mean, I was there, I'm here, I'm still alive. And I'm still trying to make sense of things in my life and the life around me. And I like to be part of the transformational process. It makes me happy, especially if it goes in the right direction. I found it interesting what you said when we met the first time. You said you started this space and you wanted to make it open also for all people. And you invited the people from the neighborhood to come with the migrant background and then come in. Well, they did. They, they did. did. I mean, okay. It is. It, it depends on the on the kind of event and um, it, it, um, but but in the very beginning we also did um, things like um, you know asking everyone what what would you like to, to to a space like this to be like and what you know what are you looking for a space like this and and so unfortunately um, Bonaventure is not here today and. Um, uh, not very many other people of the team could make it because the day-to-day um, -day was so... Uh, uh, well, we, we planned it in not a long time in advance. 
And so if they had been there, um, I mean, it would have been great to have a discussion, like what, you know, what, um, what have we been trying here uh, uh, to achieve and who have we been trying to get involved with and or to get involved in the, in the project. And I think um, there are, or there have been examples where, um, you know, we got uh, children from the local school here for a workshop and, um, and all sorts of things. And it's, I mean, it is in part a question, well, of who contributes what and who is offering things and, and who, can, who can make it even, I mean, uh, in their spare time to, to, to contribute. And uh, I mean, it's what, what I'm also interested in uh, is, in, you know, you, you're talking about the 200,000 um, euros. And, uh, <laughs> and so, so that's just a practical thing. So. Um, so yeah, maybe you can you can tell us a bit about that if it's if it's okay, like about the you know the practical the practical obstacles actually that um, you have to overcome to get the thing going. Yeah, we, we can do a lot on that. I want to add one more thing. I think yeah, one thing sure. we can try to get to make the space more like that all people um, see is also their space is that we actually build it together. Mm -hmm. so, so we actually invite all the people to build it together so it's so they will come and have out just for a day so it's it's like their place and very symbolic because it is already built together. It's it's a lot of space to be open but it's everything in there yeah. when you're in it's already symbolic symbolic yeah. for yeah. and people will feel, feel like it's their space. I mean, of course, there's a big difference between Sabi and uh, and your project because this is also an art gallery, and we sort of, um, well, at least the, the concept is we have to have white walls where people can hang things, and uh, I mean, I'm not, you know, I don't know about the art world and what you have to have to have in order to please the artists who want to hang their stuff. I mean, in, in my opinion, this could be green or red or anything, but um, well, uh, you know, when it was decided on the con. con when those decisions were made, uh, obviously um, it was going to be white, and this is, um, and yeah, it's well, building a fantasy world like that wasn't wasn't the concept. So yeah, no, exactly. But um, but of course, but I think it's very interesting what you're doing, and yeah. Well, let's talk about this whole this whole. I think people are interested in this whole money thing too. Yeah. Which is yeah. You know, um, this is a, this whole thing is an exercise in building reality. You know, everything around you in the world is all ideas. And somehow we push those ideas into reality in some way. And our first thing was to be a bit of course and while we had to have a good idea for them, you know, we didn't have a chance to get any money for it. And our first thought was we'll write up a business plan, we got this business coaching and, and, and support from the local government and stuff. And, and uh, we wrote up this, this business plan, and we saw really how much this thing was going to cost, and we thought, wow, how are we going to get this money for this place? I and mean, this, this is a lot of money. And uh, we figured our idea was we could just go, you know, write up a good business plan, take it to the bank, and they'll say, yeah, you know, give us the money, and we'll be in debt for a few years. And um, we started getting a little bit further into the process, and we realized, well, you know, you have to come with some collateral. And, like, you know, you, there's different types of banks, and we found this place, the GLS Bank. You guys know we heard of that. It's like a, it's like it's a socially they, they work out, they, they give money to socially sustainable projects basically. So we you know, we, we targeted that and how are we what our business plan to change it. And then we realized well we're gonna need to like you know get some kind of a funding no matter what. And that gave us you know because we can't go to a bank with no collateral and say with no money and say we want two hundred thousand euro. We have to go with at least say ten percent, which is so uh, twenty thousand euro. Now, if we can go with that, how we make, now it gets more reasonable. How do we get 20,000 euro? And that's how we came across the whole crowdfunding thing, which is really big now. It's like it's, it's not big in Germany yet, but in the States, and you know, it's huge. And it's starting to become bigger over here. And crowdfunding is big. Does everybody know what crowdfunding is? Everybody heard of it? Yeah? Okay. So we have our crowdfunding campaign running right now, and our full film is on the crowdfunding end, which you can see a possible explanation. But if we can get, you know, this 33000 that we're asking for now, we'll have enough money to be able to go to the bank and say, hey, look, we've not only got, you know, we, here's how many people have supported the project. These are le letters of recommendation plus money. As it turns out, also, in this crowdfunding thing, we're also allowed to get materials for the space. 
So for instance, we just got 500 euro worth of super you know, organic BO paint from this, this really high-end company, and they, they love it. The guys who are gonna do our plumbing, do the plumbing for the, for the, uh, the, the, uh, the vice time, yeah? The, mm -hmm. For the German part, for the parliament. They, they're, 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 they're gonna do it for us for like nothing. But the savings that we get from that, like 10,000 euro, we'll get to add it to our crowdfunding project. So these are real things that, they, that people are actually doing for us that we can actually build to our crowdfunding project that people can chip in, and, and that's how we're building this, this whole thing up. What exactly do you need the money for? It's for the material, or for, or are the people who work on that are they paid? Well, so yeah. Well, some people are making a little bit of money. Like for instance, we flew Isaac over here. We paid his plane, plane ticket here and back, and and and, and gave him some some cash on the side just to say, you know what, the piece he's going to do is going to be worth between eighty and hundred thousand euro. It's three and a half meters long, two meters tall of detailed carved glass. So people are putting in this, I mean, people, some people, most people are, we want, to, we want to make sure that everybody gets paid something, right? Because it's not about, like, we're trying to find a way to create balance. We see our system out here is not a balanced system. So we're trying to live and create a balanced system. We work with each individual artist. Are you willing to do this for this? Is this reasonable? Yeah. Because not only will they have the space to use, but they'll also have a place where their work is shown publicly. So they get something out of it too, plus a little cash plus the chance to realize one of their ideas. But money-wise, maybe it's just expensive to build a space build. Like, uh, you need a Bauantrag, um, you, uh, you need to build it to the rules, you need to have a certain a noise protection, a special floor, there's nothing in there, you, I mean, just bathrooms in there, walls, it's just a raw space, and so they kind of focus on the raw space. The legal use of it's just it's just really expensive. Ventilation but but once ventilation is everything has to be built in there. But the interesting idea is we say, okay, we're going to put the space and so we can um yeah uh, so so we can either get like money or we get people who help us for free. So it's just about getting the space done. So this people can make money, but making it real. Yeah, it's a balance. It's a balancing act. It's like, you know, this straight thing for like, you know, I, I do a service for you and you pay me money and there's profit, right? All the value lies in monetary value. Here, what we're doing is we are shifting and redefining what is value, what has value. But if you like get a loan from the bank, then you will have to pay it, so it's a commercial thing for you. So you have to kind of earn at least a little bit of money to be able to pay back the loan. Yes. Right? Okay. It is yeah, a commercial absolutely. thing, but uh, what's the alternative? The alternative, I mean, you need money to get to a lot of space, so you could get funding from government or, or from foundations, and then you get funding just for projects. Mm -hmm. So then you have the foundation secure for half a year or for a year, and then you don't know anymore. And you say, okay, this should be a space that's going to run for a long time, okay. and to secure that. Okay, you make it in that way commercial that we try to earn our own money and make, yeah, that depends on project funding. It's a new world that depends on the old one. Hmm? A new reality that depends a little bit on the old one. But of course. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, you know, yeah. can we thought about first like changing the world if we can build the space, but then we figure we start with the space. Mm -hmm. you know? So, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, it's, it's always a to make this happen. Of course, you. I need to deal with the system, right? Mm -hmm. we, and you have to test you know, right. use it. And we're putting so much effort in the space because we want to make this iconic. We want to make this something big. Not like not only something here in Berlin, but like, you know, like something globally iconic. Because we want to export the idea. Because you don't have to build a fancy nice space everywhere to be a nice place where people can come together to engage with each other. Just the idea of having those types of spaces. We need to bring attention to that somehow. And we're using art and design as that vehicle. And uh, once uh, the space is built, um, uh, are you going to... Oh, I think I want to say Oh, sorry. Oh, no, I'm just sorry. I saw an architect in the corner raise her hand. Oh, thank you. And thank before, you. I wanted to ask a question of you. This gentleman is an architect. There are something like 20 people in the room. <laughs> so there's at least 10% of the population in this room are architects. <laughs> And I might say, you're an architect, so now we're well up into a 14%. <laughs> How many of the architects are there here? Right. 
and the other just 14% of them. <laughs> but I mean, that's a, an interesting slice of the uh, you know, social process that I don't really know about doing that. Well, first of all, I would like to thank you because um, I would be very happy if every year, every month, I could see projects or ideas like this. Um, my dissertation had some similarities with this project. And I really like these ideas of making the world a better place. Um, however, I think that the container is not as important as the content. Uh, the problem I find is that there are many ideas of social, call it in Spain, social cultural uh, projects, uh, usually in neighborhoods that are going through some problems, uh, where the level of criminality is higher, perhaps. Mm -hmm. And then uh, they come with these ideas, and at the end they say it's a place for everyone to gather people together and exchange uh, their knowledge, their skills, and at the end it's just a place for a few people mm -hmm. that go there with their laptops, maybe, and talk about <laughs> graphic design or architecture <laughs> or something like that. So, um, for example, I really like the idea that there, there is, um, I see you've thought very much about the program.